Hello, and welcome to IA Command, your number one source for Imperial Assault news and strategy content on YouTube. I'm TV Boy, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about five rules that I often see Imperial Assault players misunderstanding or playing incorrectly. Number one, attack dice and defense dice are rolled at the same time. A lot of players have a habit of thinking that the attacker rolls and modifies their dice first, and then the defender rolls their dice after that, which is how things work in games like X-Wing and 40k. However, under step 2 of the steps of an attack, it states that the attacker and the defender both roll their dice at the same time. Then, the attacker and defender each take turns resolving rerolls, modifiers, etc., with the attacker always resolving each step of the attack before the defender. This is actually a pretty important rule because it can affect how the attacker might want to re-roll their dice or apply modifiers depending on what the defender rolls. For example, if the defender rolls an evade, aka a surge cancel, the attacker gets to know about that before they decide how they want to re-roll their attack dice and whether they need more or maybe less surges on their roll. Number 2. Special timing windows for using wall attacking and wall defending abilities. Many players, while reading through the Imperial Assault rules, have likely found the rule on page 6 of the Rules Reference Guide that wall attacking and wall defending abilities can be used any time during an attack. However, if you keep on reading through that section, you'll realize that it actually contains three important exceptions for certain abilities that use this phrase that means you can't actually play them any time you want during the attack. These three exceptions are that abilities that add or remove any dice from the dice pool must be used before dice are rolled. Abilities that reroll dice must be used before symbols or modifiers start getting added or removed from the results. And abilities that add or remove symbols from the results, aka modifiers, must be used before surge abilities are used. Most commonly, I see this mistake being made with cards that add dice to the dice pool. I often see players trying to play a card like Brace for Impact or CT's Wildfire which modifies the dice pool and does not cancel dice results, being played after the dice have already been rolled. Playing this way gives the player a major advantage since they get to see the results of the dice before they decide to play their card, like waiting to see if they roll a dodge on their white die before they play base Brace for Impact to add a black die. So make sure you're playing these cards at the right time and make sure your opponent's doing so as well. Number three, knowing when conditions require damage to be applied from an attack. This one is also super confusing even for experienced players, which is knowing which abilities count as keywords and whether or not you have to deal damage with the attack to trigger them. For example, Blast and Cleave are keywords that have specific rules that require their corresponding attack to have dealt damage to the target via the dice results to trigger. The confusing bit is when it comes to conditions as keywords on attacks and the requirements for triggering them. An attack needs to deal damage to apply a condition only if that condition is being used as a keyword on the attack. The keyword form for each condition is as follows. Focus for focused, hide for hidden, stun for stunned, bleed for bleeding, and weaken for weakened. If you see a condition mentioned on an ability that is part of an attack and it is not in one of these keyworded forms, for example, becomes hidden or becomes bleeding, then the attack doesn't have to deal damage for the condition to be applied. These include examples like Kane Somos's Squad Command, Davith's Fell Swoop, and Triple Zero's Shocking Palm. When attacking with Davith, for example, your attack does not have to deal damage to the target for Davith to become hidden if you choose to spend your surges to use Fell Swoop. Number 4. You can still use some surge abilities even against a dodge or a miss. Many players sometimes think that as soon as that dodge symbol appears in the defense results that the entire attack is just over and that the attacker doesn't get to use any of their surge abilities, but that's not actually true in every case. In reality, there are many abilities that can still happen from an attack even if the attack misses due to accuracy or a dodge. The key is to check for the phrase, if the attack did not miss. 
obviously any surge ability that adds damage modifiers to the attack results will be useless against the dodge, and as mentioned previously, blast, cleave, and condition keywords won't trigger if the attack misses. However, surge to recover damage, surge to gain movement points, or surge to gain power tokens, such as Maul's Stock Prey or Davith's Fell Swoop, Verena's Knife ability, the Jawa's Bargain ability, etc. can all still be used even if the attack misses. As long as the ability being used doesn't say if the attack did not miss or if the attack dealt damage, and isn't Blast, Cleave, or a Condition keyword, you can still trigger that ability against a dodge. Number 5. In Skirmish, you can't play more than one copy of the same command card in a given opportunity. Though most Skirmish command cards are limited to one per deck, there are some command cards that can be played in multiples, sometimes even up to three copies, like with Escalating Hostilities from the Heart of the Empire expansion. If you have two or more copies of the same command card in your hand, you can't play more than one copy for any given opportunity. So taking the Escalating Hostility card as an example, after you play your first copy of Escalating Hostility, after resolving an attack, you cannot then play a second copy on that same attack, as that is the same opportunity. You must wait until a new opportunity to play the card arises. The thing I most often see this mistake being forgotten about is for the card Reinforcements. Perhaps because players are so used to reinforcing multiple figures in campaign, I often see new players to Skirmish trying to play two copies of Reinforcements at the end of a round in Skirmish, which is not allowed. You can only play one copy during each round. Also know that this restriction still applies even if your command card got negated by something like Negation or Calm Disruption, because you still technically played the card even though its effect didn't resolve. So remember, it's per opportunity you can only play one copy of a command card. Hopefully this will help you in future games so you can better understand the rules while you're playing. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and what rules you think a lot of players might be getting wrong, whether it's in skirmish or campaign.